A second special case, let's look at that. So it looks really similar. No distributive property, I'm gonna combine like terms. And I end up with negative two x minus one equals negative one minus two x. Remembering what we were talking about up here, I'm going to add two x first and then I end up with negative one equals negative one. So this is different than the no solution case. Now I have a statement that is, is instead of never true, I have a statement that is always true. Negative one does always equal negative one. So I'm not gonna circle this. Again, this is not my answer. This is my justification or my work. When I end up with this case, I know that since negative one is always equal to negative one, there are an infinite number of solutions to this equation, meaning anything I plug in for x ends up with a true statement because negative one equals negative one no matter what you plug in for x. So if I were to ask you how many solutions are there, you would say an infinite number of solutions. However, if I'm asking you to solve, your answer is not going to be infinite solutions. Your solution or your answer is going to be all real numbers meaning I can plug in any number that I know for x and I will have a true statement. If I plugged in one, two times one is two, minus one is one, one minus four is negative three. Plugging in one over here, negative one minus two times one, negative one minus two is negative three, so I would have negative three equals negative three. If I plugged in zero for x, I'd have negative one equals negative one. Any number that I plug in for x gives me a true statement, and therefore my solution is all real numbers. So if I ask you for the solution, please don't say infinite solution. Say your solution, which is all real numbers. If I ask you how many solutions, then you can say there's an infinite number of solutions. Looking at the second line, the all real numbers solution makes sense because on the left-hand side, I'm multiplying x by negative 2 and then subtracting 1, that's going to give me exactly the same thing as, subtract, as negative 1 minus 2 times that number. These two expressions are equivalent and will always give me the same number. If I had added 1 first, it's important that you know you can't stop here negative 2x equals negative 2x, you can't just go to all real numbers. You would have still had to add 2x to both sides and end up with 0 equals 0. The infinite solution case will have a justification of 0 equals 0 if you go this route, and that's okay. But again, look how many steps over here versus just plus 2x plus 2x. So we'd really like you to remember, move the variable term first and then um, you will end up right away with your special solution justification. If you'll notice, a special case always is a situation where you have the same coefficient once you've simplified both sides of the equation, the same coefficient on both sides. Negative 2x minus 1, 9 minus 2x. Negative 2x minus 1, negative 1 minus 2x. So the special solution case is when there is the same coefficient in front of x on both sides of the equation. Once you understand this, you will be able to immediately look at this line and say, hey, there is no solution because the constant terms are different. Hey, there are infinite solutions because the constant term is the same. That's great. That's a great way to check your answer, but you still need to show your work moving the variable term using inverse operations in order to get to this step as your justification. So you can't just stop here and say all real numbers. You can't just stop here and say no solution. If we're just asking you how many solutions, if the coefficients are not the same, like in this case, you can just say, hey, I know there is one solution. You don't have to actually find that solution. You know there's one solution because the coefficients are not the same. Again, special cases only occur when you have the same coefficient on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation.